Farming in Africa is a dawn till dusk job. Millions of farmers struggle to produce more crops and animals than they need themselves, so they can sell a little and improve their lives. To do so, people need livestock. Livestock are the force behind farm expansion. But much of Africa's woodlands and savannas are infested with sassiflies. When livestock are taken into this region, large numbers are at risk from a deadly tropical disease, trypanosomosis. Every year, trypanosomosis kills millions of livestock and costs farmers billions of dollars. The buzz of a fly is a first sign of trouble. The sessifly carries the parasites that cause trypanosomosis. For over half a century, scientists have tried to defeat trypanosomosis. In the 1950s and 60s, drugs were developed that, if applied regularly and correctly, cured the cattle and allowed farming to expand. But the use of these medicines has been extremely widespread for many years, with not all treatments given in the right way. As a result, drug resistance has developed and is now spreading, threatening the growth of agriculture and economic development across a region where most countries are already amongst the poorest in the world. <laughs> Livestock have always been central to the lives of small-scale farmers across West Africa. Here, agriculture remains the only way for many families to supply their daily needs, and farm animals deliver a wide range of necessities. They provide manure to maintain soil fertility and boost crop yield, power for plowing and moving goods. Milk and meat for better diets. Plaster for houses. And a cultural identity. Since they're mobile, of high value and easily traded, they also bring ready cash and security during natural or man-made disasters. But expanding populations and increasing life expectancy across the region are bringing changes. Over recent generations, farms in fertile areas have been subdivided into ever smaller parcels. Natural resources like water and grazing are becoming degraded. while access to modern communications inevitably makes people want more goods and services. Many are desperate to use their farms to increase their incomes.
Yet, in recent decades, veterinary extension and other support services have been declining. While at the same time, farmers have been trying to produce more for sale. They want to take advantage of new opportunities coming from increasing demand for livestock products in the growing towns and cities. Markets for food and cash crops also continue to grow. Farmers are therefore making huge efforts to get oxen and other cattle so that they can expand their herds, cultivate more croplands and increase their production. But competition for land is pushing farming into the Sessa belt. This region is infested with flies which feed on blood and spread infection by transferring trypanosomes into the bloodstream. Sleeping sickness still kills thousands of people annually, but is now confined to a few places. Livestock trypanosomosis, however, is so widespread and deadly that locals call it the malaria of cattle. It leads to the deaths of millions of animals every year. Researchers and development workers have struggled for decades to control the disease. Past attempts have taken five main forms. The first approach involves sesset traps. These are very effective locally when technicians are available to set them up and monitor them. But there are not enough technicians or resources. So when fly numbers go down and the problem seems to reduce, control is difficult to sustain. The second approach uses insecticides as sprays and porons for cattle to reduce sesa numbers and so cut down the likelihood of each animal getting the disease. However, most farmers in the region lack the technical knowledge and money to use insecticides in a way that can't control sese. The third approach involves releasing laboratory reared sese that can't breed. This option works only in isolated areas and also it is difficult to produce flies in sufficient numbers. Together, these approaches can drastically reduce sese numbers. However, the reservoir of sese within the woodland, savanna, and river areas of Africa is so great and covers so many countries that the effects are only temporary. Over time, sese flies migrate from neighboring untreated areas to reinfest the cleared sites. The fourth and widely popular approach, treating cattle with drugs, is the most accessible way of fighting the disease for farmers. However, over the last two decades, trypanosomes have been increasingly able to survive the drugs and multiply. This resistance to drugs can happen in any area with any infection when drugs are used frequently. Currently, more than 50 million doses of trypanocidal drugs are given every year in Africa. Sometimes when a cow diagnosed with trypanosomosis is treated with trypanocidal medicines, a few of the parasites within the infection will be naturally resistant and able to survive the drugs. They then multiply, producing offspring that are also resistant. A cow with surviving trypanosomes might at first appear to improve with treatment, but the numbers of parasites are growing and will probably make the cow chronically ill. Long-term infections allow other biting sese to transfer some resistant trypanosomes to more animals, causing drugs to lose effectiveness over growing areas. 
This is called drug resistance. Farmers they see that their animals do not improve, so they increase the number of treatments or even the quantity of drugs. And then, of course, the trypanosomes will get more resistant. This process of increasing the dosage cannot go on like that because the animals eventually die. The fifth approach is to encourage farmers who don't have access to drugs or can't afford them to make better use of native cattle that are less susceptible to the disease. African animals that evolved together with the sese develop the ability to tolerate the disease without getting very sick. Indigenous cattle with this characteristic include the Ndama, the Bole and other West African shorthorn breeds. These hardy local cattle tend to be small, producing little milk and meat. But they can withstand trypanosomosis and other illnesses better than breeds from outside the region and are generally tough enough to survive water and feed shortages. However, breeding schemes to improve productivity of indigenous animals are not far developed. Farmers desperate to improve their incomes want to use the larger, stronger, more docile zebu cattle that also fetch higher prices in the market. But these cattle come from outside the sesa belt and more easily get trypanosomosis. One of the, the important messages is that resistance to drugs is related to the intensification of agricultural production. If you want to grow cotton, you need this uh, huge trypanosusceptible cattle. Since they are sensitive to trypanosomes, they need to be treated more frequently and uh, then you are selecting for more resistant trypanosome populations. We found that in areas where cotton is grown, we have quite often drug resistance, whereas in areas where we still use trypanotolerant cattle breeds, there we don't have. Resistant parasites are no longer killed by standard drug doses. Livestock keepers from these areas are now forced to give higher doses of trypanocytes more and more often just to keep their animals alive. In addition, vets and vet care are expensive and increasingly hard to find in rural areas. But the trypanocyte drugs are readily available, and cattle owners usually have little option but to treat the animals themselves. To make matters worse, many of these farmers don't have the information they need to use drugs in the right way. Drug quality is a big issue in West Africa regarding trypanosomiasis because the farmers can't read, they don't know what is good, what is wrong, and uh, you have uh, drugs on the black market, uh, cheaper, but we are not sure it's a quality drug. In the past, research has tended to focus on single elements of disease control, either working to improve medicines for livestock, promote and breed animals less susceptible to the disease, or get rid of sese. Now, an international research project is pulling together these elements into an integrated approach. The size of the problem means progress will be slow. And in the meantime, farmers will still need help. Developing new drugs for the market takes a long time and is expensive, so farmers will need to go on using current ones in ways that limit drug resistance. The project has devised a new method of drug use based on similar challenges in human medicine. Known as Rational Drug Use, RDU, 
It aims to simplify and improve the diagnosis of the disease and the process of giving the medicines so that people carrying out most treatments can do it better and more safely and so minimize the spread of drug resistance. Le projet a développé un kit destiné à faire des bonnes pratiques de l'administration dans le traitement des animaux. Et aussi dans ce kit, il y a des outils pour poser un bon diagnostic. Et aussi pour l'utilisation rationnelle des trypanocytes, il y a la formation. La formation continue. Donc ce sont ces deux lignes qu'on a développé pour l'utilisation rationnelle des trypanocytes. Rational Drug Use acknowledges that the pressure for farmers to continue to treat their own animals is huge and providing farmers with information can reduce problems of misuse and so minimize emergence of drug resistance. However, though better use of medicines will slow the emergence of disease resistance in new places, there are fewer options for areas where resistance is already established. Ideally, all drug use should stop in these areas so that resistant strains of the parasite die out. But this is not likely to work because farmers need to continue treating to keep their animals alive. Development of a new drug could help, but that too is unlikely to happen soon. We really need a new strategy to make the best use of, of the old drugs and rational drug use is such a strategy. Rational drug use means using the right drugs in the right amounts and only when they're needed. It's been extremely successful when applied in human health, but it requires some investments to make it work. And this involves awareness raising and training of people at all levels, from farmers to veterinarians to policy makers. TRDU messages developed and tested with farmers in West Africa include Only buy quality medicines from good suppliers Wash hands and sterilize equipment before treating Diagnose properly in order to treat only when necessary and estimate the weights of cattle to accurately calculate dosages. By following RDU guidelines, individual treatments will be given better and overall treatment numbers will decrease. RDU creates another challenge, however. Laws across most of the region only allow veterinary professionals to prescribe, handle and administer these drugs. Yet the reality is that drugs are available to anyone from pharmacies and even the open market without a prescription. Because of the rules, no one can officially give help to and raise awareness among farmers, even though they are the largest and most vulnerable group using the drugs. Until this policy gap can be closed, the problems with inappropriate drug use will continue. There are not enough vets and qualified personnel. Therefore, policy should be flexible enough to allow the farmers to treat their own animals. We need to change the legislation on the access to drugs and on the drug treatments. If the research results are not capable to bring a change in the legislation, it will be very difficult for the farmers to keep their animals in good health. Advances have been made in the understanding and control of trypanosomosis. However, the long-term goal of reducing the territory claimed by the disease will depend on the success of the integrated approach and will take many years. In the meantime, the veterinary services, researchers, drug manufacturers, international agencies and programs all need to work together with farmers. 
the focus must be on slowing the spread of drug resistance by reducing the numbers of cessay and encouraging proper use of the drugs. The ongoing application of rational drug use, together with updated laws and advances in research, should allow millions of farming families to protect their livestock and so continue to improve their livelihoods.